DJ Spell Podcast, Woo! everybody. Yeah. Coming to you from lovely Juicy Oasis. Listen, once again, thanks for your company. Wherever you're listening to this, I mean, I don't know where you are. You could be in the gym. You could be cooking dinner for the kids. Or you could be taking a stroll in the park or... You could be shopping for a cool new pair of shoes, which just may be a clue to today's guest. Now, he's an actor, a model, and a pretty impressive entrepreneur, to say the least. He's the second most famous mallet after Timmy himself. (laughs) Yes, of course, it's Terry Rose, Tommy (laughs) Mallet, everybody. (laughs) What an intro. What an intro. (laughs) It was great, that. I mean, it's not bad, is it? I am here with Towie's own Tommy Mallet. Thank you for coming on this podcast anyway, because we're here at Juicy Oasis, just to let you know, and Tommy's here, Tommy normally comes every year in January for a little bit of a shakedown. And last night I was starting to ask him some questions because I'm really fascinated about his company and that's what we're going to delve into here. And I said, oh, I said, actually, you'd be great on my podcast, right? And, and he went, yeah, well, I'll come on. And then he suddenly realised, hang on, I haven't been on anybody's. It's I don't do one. one. This is your very- my first podcast. So you turn down a lot of this stuff, right? And, yeah. and radio and stuff. Is there yeah. a reason for that? Just because of timings and stuff like that. I work 16 to 18 hours a day. So I don't really have time to fit in doing a podcast. I don't really know the owners of them either. I know you really well. So right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's, so, it's, this is my thing really. It's my, and I, waited, I was waiting for the first one. Because you were back at Juicy Oasis and you said, um, which I couldn't believe, like this place does a lot of good for you mentally and physically, right? Yeah. So I started coming here about four or five years ago. You said I was a model at the start and I'm far from it now, but I used to be in good shape and I got really bad sciatica and it stopped me from walking. So I put on, I was 117 kilos. I was a smoker. I was, really? Yeah, I was starting a I business off. Well, yeah, all of that, yeah. And you I, were just starting the business at that point? I was just starting. Okay. So there was only two of us in the business and we started it from scratch. So I was smoking, I couldn't walk. I was traveling all over the world. I was eating bad and my girlfriend brought me here. And it was, I've always been spiritual, always. I've always had something in me. I come here and it changed my life. I just, I used to sit on the river down there, just watching the water. And it just, it done something to me. And so I've made it like my religion to come here every single year, same time of year. And it starts my year off like and you would imagine. And it's funny because we, we have a, a, obviously our slogan is sometimes the best way to move forward is to retreat, yeah. to step back. And you are so busy all of the time and even back then like you said do you smoke now by the way no, I just I have a little chunt on the vape every now yeah, and then no, okay <laughs> fair enough but yeah but fundamentally yeah you start smoking I'm waiting for the book to come out yeah so okay fair stop. enough <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, how to stop vaping which, which will come out soon I'm sure and like you said you, you managed to take yourself away from stuff and you just started the business and you said actually a lot of the focus not not, not here it's a spiritual place I'm not uh, it's not the juicing so much it's here there's something about here but like the you... juice also comes into it because I've never eaten vegetables I've never ever eaten vegetables you know me and you've got something very much yeah. in common here. Well, when we first spoke I remember saying it I've never ever eaten a vegetable I don't eat fruit don't eat veg no I don't go need any salad nothing so I'm really unhealthy and it, what happened was is I was working myself to the ground and then I was, I'd was i only have three days off a year and it'd be Christmas. And I would have that off and I'd get ill. So then I've just made juicing part of my life. So I don't really get ill as much or nothing like that anymore. So Do you know, it's really fun. And it's a big message for a lot of people out there, especially juice skeptics, people that say, well, why do people juice, right? So one of the examples I often give was a, a gentleman who was huge. He was 32 stone and he had every kind of ailment and disease that you could think of. And his wife, when I said, this is all he's going to be juicing for the next month. And she says, well, why doesn't he just eat it? And I said, that's a very good point. It's impossible, isn't it? Well, it's not that. I said, it's a very good point. I said, I don't know why he doesn't eat it, but he clearly doesn't. Yeah. So we need to find another way in. Now, I'm not a big fan of eating vegetables, why I drink it. My my philosophy for the last 20 years, if you can't eat it, can you drink it? Mm. And you're a perfect example of that. You don't want to eat vegetables, right? No. That's it. And I'm loads of people gonna. like that. No, exactly. So therefore, is there a way that you can get what is necessary for your system? You need this stuff yeah. going in. So if you can't eat it, drink it. And actually here, you do seven days. Seven days. And it's never enough. I could always stay longer. Really? Do you always. Ever, and always do you ever, stay longer. And do you ever suffer any withdrawal while you're here or detox symptoms? I mean, you're bound to at some point. The, first, you- the first two days when I'm here, the most detox I would say it was is getting away from work. That's the, the anxieties of... Not because I try as hard as I can to spend time with the missus, do the walks in the morning. But the Sunday and the Monday, I'm getting off here. I'm, I don't really get hungry no more, right, but okay. I'm I'm getting away from work sort of stuff. So I'm worrying a little bit of what's going on there about me. I've got so many staff, but i am still got it. That's my only withdrawal, I think. I'm so used to it now. It's part of my life coming in. Do you know what a lot of people do? Because a lot of people are detoxing. I mean, it's, withdrawing is a better word, but they're detoxing from life in general as well. And, and it won't be just yourself here. Everybody's leaving something. 
you know, you're always leaving something, you're always worried about something, but actually, presumably you've got a pretty good team. Yeah. And and they're probably taking care of stuff, but it sounds like you need to be in control of this. I'm, I'm a control freak. I'm I'm all about making things better all the time. I'm always, always better myself, no matter what I do. Well, I look at that on your, on your Instagram post. I mean, one of your sayings, it says here, we just looked at one of your mottos in life. If you believe it, if you dream it, then yeah. you can achieve it. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you're aware, it's very similar to somebody in 1953, so you might not be aware of it. Uh, somebody <laughs> it called 92, I was yeah, born, yeah, mate. yeah, yeah. <laughs> somebody called Napoleon Hill. Whatever the mind can believe and conceive, it, it can achieve. Yeah. And, it, and it does very much look like, not only is that a mantra of yours, but you actually make it real. A lot of people talk a good game, yeah. but you've gone beyond talking. And no matter what hurdles that you've had, you know, dyslexia has pl played a part yeah. in, in your, I mean, I'm heavily dyslexic. Yeah. I mean, so, uh, but if you look at some of the most successful people They're dyslexic. <laughs> on earth, it's a funny yeah. thing, right? Yeah. And that's what's driven me. And that's the believe and achieve thing. I come from an estate in Island then, I'm from North London. I come from quite a, a negative area. There's not much going on there. I can't read. I can read a, a text message, but I can't read a bit of paper in front of me. I can read a, what that what that says over there. But if you put it in front of me in a book, I can't read it. Is that because you get a headache as you'll read? Do you, not a headache. It jumbles you, up. It, it doubles up. Yeah, it yeah, it yeah, doubles yeah, up. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I would love to be able to read a book. I've listened to The Secret 50 times. Right, okay. Fine. When it comes to trying to read it, I can't get out of the first paragraph because it goes back to front. And I don't know my timetables. I can do my fives up to about 30 and I forget where I am. But then if you put 100 grand in front of me, I can count it quicker than anyone you've ever met. Believe yeah, me. Yeah, it's funny. All of a sudden, you, you're, when it comes to how much you're selling your yeah, shoes exactly. for and how much profit there is, exactly. all of a sudden you become Rain Man. Rain Man. <laughs> but that, that, behind that slogan is a lot because I know if I want to, I can get it. There's nothing I can't achieve. And I'm really, really, really strong on that. I will get anything I want. There's nothing in front of me to stop me. The point is, is that like you said, coming from a humble background, I'm from a state as well, a state in Peckham and everything else. And I think that helps really because it, dr it drives you, you go, this isn't where I want to be. No. This isn't where I want to be. And the fact is you don't have these rules. Most people go, well, I would achieve, but mm. my education lets me down. My writing lets me down. In fact, actually you're using those as a positive thing to say, despite those things. Yeah. I'm. St in fact, actually it could be argued that because of those, that you have a different mindset. 100%. Everything I do is I wing everything. I've not been taught. I am clever, but I'm not academic. So I've not got the same mindset as someone I went to school with because they took note in class. I didn't. I went outside and sold stuff, yeah. sold cigarettes, sold drinks, whatever yeah. I could do to yeah, earn money. Yeah. And I feel like it's always in the back of my head that I need to prove to myself, not anyone else, that I can do it and I'm not worthless because I felt worthless yeah, for a long, long time until yeah. I was about 19, 20. Right. And then that's when the whole show started and then I went on telly. And is that because, like you said, you was also eating, you were smoking, you were all those kind of things. Yeah, are, are, are they, they all tied hand in hand, do you think? I've got into the, I've got into the same, same thing a lot of kids my age done. I'd go out on the weekend, I'd go out Friday, Saturday and have a drink. I'd be dying on Sunday, so I'd eat as bad as I can, pizzas. And then Monday, I made it all over the place and I lost it. So that's when I give up drinking. Right. I give up drinking and any, anything that stops me on my path right. is just over there. So whether it's friends that try to pull me into bad situations, don't have it with them. But this is for long to a lot of young people in particular listening, because you've got a lot of uh, obviously young followers yeah. as well, obviously from being in TOWIE and so on. But a lot of them would have had this lifestyle or be living the lifestyle right now yeah. that you did. And your message to them, if they have goals and everything else, what would you say to them in order to achieve those goals? What kind of mindset? What would they need to eat, drip? What they need to focus on? What would you say? There's one mindset behind it. You've got a, you've got a vision what you want and you've got to go and get it. And you've got to become obsessed with it and you can't let anything stop you. So if going out and drinking on the weekend is going to delay you two days, in my head, why I'm dying in bed from a hangover, there's someone else working harder than me to go and take what I've achieved. And I ain't getting skint again. It ain't happening. I've got family. Dad works for me. My mum does bits and pieces for me. I've got lovely staff members that of uh, younger kids that I'm trying to give opportunities to. And I've got a lot of, got a lot of pressure on my back. Yeah, and sure. I'm not that guy that's going to come and fail because I failed in school. So now I'm, I'm going for that champion mindset and nothing is stopping me. No, I can see. I like this, this idea of a champion mindset. Yeah, yeah. I quite like that. That's a good name for a book. You sure? Yeah. Uh, to, to, to <laughs> Got to learn how to read one before I write it. <laughs> do you know what? You actually don't. No, because look, 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 I've somehow written 16 books, but I can't read very well either. I mean, over the years, you, you kind of train yourself. But no, you don't. The mm. good news is now the spell check. Yeah. This, this, the other, yeah. And there's other people that can write the book for you. But a champion mindset. Like you left school with one GCSE, correct? Yeah, right? well, it weren't even a GCSE. It was a D, so... Right, okay, so yeah, so yeah. no, no, so... No, not, and so, it was in so, history because my form tutor passed me in it because she was my teacher as well. But would you say <laughs> to those going through their exams, and sometimes they get disproportionately 
you know, set back, yeah. you know. Also, obviously, I guess you don't want them listening to this going, oh, well, education doesn't matter then, right? <laughs> I've, ha I've had this, I've had this a few times because I, I always say the same thing. So me and my brother is a prime example of it. My brother's got a first in construction. He's very, very successful. He worked harder than anyone I've ever known to get his grades. He got the best grades in the country for his whole university. And then there's me that struggles to read and write. I was going in the wrong path. But I always looked at it in this way. There's two kinds of people. Both can become a success. You can do what my brother done and you're talented. You work really hard. That's the best way of doing it. Or you can do what I do and not on purpose. I wasn't the cleverest kid and I struggled to get where I am today. And I struggle every day because I can't read an email great. But there's also the, the part of it is if you're hardworking and you've got a vision, no one can take that off of you because there's much cleverer people than you who don't want to get up and go to work every day. And there's people that don't want it. And for me, I can take anything I want and I can take it off anyone because if there's a Rolls Royce over there and there's a guy next to me who's got a master's degree and we're on zero and we say, who's going to go and get it first? I <laughs> promise you now I'm getting it first. You see, now that's the champion mindset. That's the, the champion mindset. I love mindset. that. It's very obvious. And listen, if I was listening to you now, if I was like 18, 19 and I'm listening to you now, I would genuinely start to be a little bit excited Yeah. because so many people put restrictions on themselves or oh, well, they, they've got a better education. But actually, if you have a, a champion, like you said, you already know there's two people hand to hand. Yeah. It's there. Like, like for you, taking part isn't what it's about. No, it's, it's about winning. It's about it's winning. <laughs> yeah. But that's why I don't play no sports. I don't I don't waste my competitiveness. <laughs> I love like, that. For example, I don't, I don't play volleyball. I like, don't I'll, waste my competitiveness. I don't, I don't waste it because I'm, 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 I'm thinking of other things. Damn, so I like, could have been way more successful if <laughs> I just dropped. Listen, you've already done it. So you're all right. <laughs> you can play volleyball, but... But it's, it works. <laughs> it works in different sort of things. For example, your, your story about your skin. Yes. And many people would have gone... Oh, that's it. I've got it. I'm yeah. going to struggle now. I've just got to get on with it. But you didn't. So what Tommy's talking about there is I was covered from better foot in a skin disease called psoriasis, for those that don't know. And it's interesting because some people will give you a, a kind of a diagnosis and a, and a synopsis of essentially what you can do and what you can't do. And of course, I was handed down saying, well, there's nothing you can do. And, and what you're saying, presumably, is, well, actually, the master majority of people will accept that. But you didn't. And same with you. Somebody says to you, oh, well, actually, you, oh, come on, Tommy, you got no education. You got yeah. no this. Actually, you just accept. But it happened hundreds of times. And then, and then you're saying, except what well, I'm accepting nothing. That's I'm what drives you, you, I think. But this is think. why you're looking fit. I mean, you are, you're looking really fit. You're looking kilos, sharp. Man, I've lost 17 kilos. You've lost 17, 17 kilos. kilos. Yeah. You look sharp. I'm trying. Honestly, to be. I mean, you can't. This podcast isn't being videoed, but it's I mean, costing me a fortune, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, you, but yeah, but you are looking sharp. But it does seem to all come back to this champion mindset, and it's driven by this absolute desire to be financially successful. Which some people, I don't know why they frown at that, because all money gives you is freedom. That's what it, it does. Freedom, like you said, already you employ family members, people that you can get, yeah. and so you, you would be a natural philanthropist anyway. I already know that. You already started to do that. In fact, actually. We even read this morning, just before this podcast, while this is being recorded, there's some horrific fires going on in Australia. You're already donating a whole chunk of the sales yeah. from shoes yeah. to the stuff that's going on in Australia. So your drive and desire is not just so that you can go, hey, look at my car, whatever the case is. I'm not is. interested. Like that I know you're not. Yeah. I can see that. Stop me from wrong, but it seems to be like you want to get there, as in wherever there is, and you just want to go, right, I've got it. Yeah. You're not that interested in it. Nah. But it's like, once it's there, it's like, right, what's the next goal? Do you know what? Because it was a bit of an anticlimax when coming from just a normal background, which I had a, a lovely life, but me wanting, wanting, wanting to be rich, to be successful and all of that. And it's like, when I actually got to a certain point about two years ago, I was like, oh, is this it? Well, that happens like when you climb a mountain, you have a look around, the view's fantastic. Yeah, the same thing that gets you to where you are, which is this drive, this champion mindset, the name of your, do your autobiography. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, no, sure. but, the, but the champion mindset, you can't switch off. You can't. It, it, the same thing that gets you to where you are, it is very difficult. And those entrepreneurs that are out there, those that, that literally are driven every day to get up at four, get up at five, whatever it yeah. is, and go, look, I want this more than anything else. And then you think, well, once I get there, I can just, ah, oh, I can relax back. Mm. It's, it's so hard. So the way I've worked around it is, for example, that charity thing I've done there. So I donated 24 hours of my profits on my online business to Australia. And believe it or not, it was quite a big chunk. It's a big it chunk a because big your chunk. business is successful. Yeah, it's quite successful. <laughs> but that's my new thing is helping people. For example, I've done something for a kids charity back in the summer. I met the most wonderful kid from Great Ormond Street. His, his wish was to design a shoe for me. Um, oh, I saw that. I yeah. actually saw that. If you follow Tommy on Instagram, if you don't, make sure you do. And just go back. Go back over his timeline. Mm. Anyway. His wish was to design a shoe for me. And 
he come to me without him knowing. I got a film crew. I made him his own little documentary of him doing it in a day. And what happened was, is I learned so much off this kid. And I was like, I was I had a 150 grand car outside, yeah. two of them. Yeah. And I'm sitting there and I was like, all right, what can I do to help this kid? How am I going to help this kid? And they come up to me and said, nothing. There's nothing you can do for no. him. So we designed the shoe. He's excited. I took him to every outlet. Anything you want, I'll buy you. He said to me, save your money and spend it on your missus. She deserves it. This kid's 10, 11. Yeah, yeah. So off the back of that, I said, all right, do you know what we're going to do? This shoe's quite nice. We're going to bring it out and we're going to make you your own shoe and it's going to be in circulation. It's going to be called the Freddy. And I said, and all the proceeds go to you and you can spend your life, what's left of it, on whatever you want. And he wanted to give it all to charity. He said he wanted to give it to Raise the Sunshine charity. So that inspired me to do a lot. So unfortunately, he didn't live to see it come. He died oh, in May so and I bought it out. And yeah, I bought it out in August oh and we sold out of it straight away. And we raised a fortune for the charity that he oh, wanted God. us to give it to. But it taught me a lot because I, I looked at it and I was like, I'll just change this kid's final, final few months of his life. I, I, he was designing shoes in Great Ormond Street in bed on an iPad. He was the brightest kid you have ever met in your life. I found the shoe that he designed on his Instagram. I put it out there and I sold it and uh, it sold out in about five minutes. And then we're doing another one now. I ain't told his mum and dad yet, but we're going to do another one like that. So that's my new thing is, is inspiring and, and helping people and giving as much as I can. Money's printed, man. I wrote a little book called Create Magic. It's like the secret, but the difference is that actually, instead of just visualizing, you've got to get off your ass and actually do you something. Get, yeah. You've got to go and I'll get know it. About it. But, but Create Magic is clearly what you are. We call them magic makers. You are a born magic maker. Freddie was a born magic maker. Yeah, yeah, right? 100%. End of story. And his legacy will continue living on a yeah. magic maker. Now, there's chapter two of this particular book called The Joey Tribbiani Rule from Friends. And there's no such thing as a selfless good deed. So when you're telling this story of what you did for Freddie. It makes you good, feel good. Correct. Not only does it make you feel good, but I guarantee, and you can stop me if I'm wrong, you had 250 grand cars outside the mm. building at the time. But when Freddie said to you, the best thing you can do is give this to your yeah. wife. And they I bet that meant more to yeah, you. Yeah, Any more car, than anything. Anything. Any of this. Anything. Because it's like, for a kid to tell you that, and this kid made me so much more wise. I could not tell you. It was at a time in my life where I needed it. Yeah. I've had my struggles with anxieties and, and depressions and yeah. stuff like that. Not to a bad scale, but stress. Stress, that's what I, I put stress down to. It can make you depressed. And he come along and I was like, wow, this is why I'm actually doing it. This is why I've been working all these years, day and night. Yeah. It's because I've got someone like that and I'm going to make a difference of it. So I'm going to carry on doing that my whole life. I, I'm always, always going to help. And I thought, for example, when Grim yeah. Patel was yeah, branding yeah. down, I had another company which was just being made. I had about a thousand tracksuits made for it. And we was launching that day and I was like, we can't do this. But Grenfell yeah, was burning down. Absolutely. So we filled a van up and drove to Grenfell and give every bit of the stock to Grenfell. But no one hears about that stuff because I don't want them to no, hear about good. it. And that's the true natural born magic. Yeah. Makers, right? I think what's lovely about this particular podcast that we do, it's gone in a different direction than I ever thought it would, which is, <laughs> which is fantastic. Welcome but, to the life of Tommy Mann. No, but I, think it, but I think it's lovely because health, fitness and mindset podcast essentially is what it is. And I think all mental health and physical health are, are intrinsically connected. I mean, the, the, you can't separate the two. But I think this this lifting up, this positive mindset, but more so to the point of, doesn't matter about your education, doesn't matter this, but then your message of once you've done all that and you've got the car and everything else, but actually it's it's about the Grenfell Towers. It's about the Freddies. So look, you only agreed to the podcast yesterday because we only like met yep. up yesterday, you know, say hi. And I was like, oh, I want to know more. And then, so I get a little printout just before we go on. And it's just some facts, right? So you just go down, you go, all right, started a hit reality show. The only way is Essex. Is then, and you think you're going to go down a certain line, but the stuff that Google will never know about. Never. And that's what I call the real juice. Yeah, right? you don't want them to know either. You don't want them to know your net worths and your charitable <laughs> businesses. <laughs> no, of course. It's funny, you know, in the UK, if you make a success of yourself, then people, for some reason, the UK want to bring you down. Whereas if you was in America, they'd want to shake your hand and give you high fives. And Do you know what, Jay? I, I couldn't explain the amount of love I get off people for me inspiring the kids. It's crazy. When I was first started a reality show, I got all that. Oh, you gang, why are you not working, doing this, you're doing that? Why are you doing that Ponzi stuff? I've done that because I didn't have enough money for PR for, to start my business off. It's the only reason I've done it. I'm not even from Essex. I went on the TV. Yes, I saw that. Yeah, you didn't, you didn't from Essex, Essex till you were 15. Yeah, yeah. I, I see the opportunity of Towie and for hold on a minute. That's free PR for me to launch my shoe brand. That's I why I've done this. it. I love this. So when I was doing that, people was like, why is he doing this? But nah, 
I've gone done talks to schools off the back of it. Mm. I've done stuff for mental health or mental health day. I've given advice to people about getting out of bed in the morning. And that's the reason I've done that show was to do that. So the people see that and I get a lot of love about it. I get mums and dads yeah. from all over the place. The support is crazy. Well, you're going to get it on the back of this. There's no question. Like I said, this has gone in a way and I will, I, listen, I know it sounds mad, but I'll get, I know some, you know, some people that like 19, 20, 21, some people that are not really finding their own feet. I want them to listen to this. I want to listen to you. That's what I want. That's what I think the, the world needs is when I was in school and, and I was as a naughty kid, if a geezer comes walking in a suit and starts telling me what to do in my future with a posh accent, I ain't listening to him. You're here. And I just I said, are you doing anything else? And you're actually going on holiday. But do you, after this, so you, you do this every year, yeah. come here for a little recharge and then you go on holiday or, yeah. or recharge. Do you manage to cut off a tour? Are you going to, are you getting better at it? A little bit, but all it takes is someone to walk past me with something on that I've never seen. And then I'm Googling it and I'm asking, I stop and ask people, what, women, where they get their shoes from. So someone will pass me, I go, oh my God, where'd you get them from? And they'll be like, this place in America. I go, oh, that's a good stockist for me. Let me get in contact. And then it all just starts working like that. I'll get up three hours before Georgia on holiday so wow. I can do my stuff on my phone, keep connected. I post on Instagram three times a day, religiously. Listen, if anybody's listening, right, young kid, whatever, young kids or even people in 20s, 30s, where, this is what it takes. My mum always said to me, success, you know, is it no such thing as an overnight success. The overnight success is at least 10 years, right? And you've got to get up and put the work in. But where you are, people can say to you, oh, he's lucky, isn't he? And they, this one of the things that drives me most crazy is the harder you work, the luckier you get. Have you yeah, found that? hundred <laughs> percent. But you need to get over it, don't you? It's like, Everyone thinks I wouldn't be where I would if I didn't go on TV. It was, no, it was I a just, no, I disagree. I Having this conversation I now. Been bigger. Do you know what? I'm being serious. Having this conversation, there's no way with the mindset that you have, yeah. and I know this for a fact, there is no way on earth that with the, your champion, the Tommy Malik champion, champion mindset, mindset yeah. but I love that as well. I probably would have been bigger. I would have been bigger no, because, it, do you know what it was? It's because when I first started my brand, people, oh, and it's that kid from Tower, I can't wear his name on my stuff. Oh, took me a course. long, long time to get out of that. But then when I started working with Selvages, Harrods and the biggest stores around the world, I've got 250 to 300 oh. now and I'm best selling brand in most of my stores. I've got stores in Dubai. I've got stores in South Africa. I've got, I've got 30 stores in the Netherlands. I'm in places in Dubai, which only sell Gucci and the biggest brands in the world. And I'm keeping up with them. Now I'm taken seriously. But they are sharp. Thank you, mate. No, but they are sharp, aren't Thank they? You. And like, you can tell there's an obsession. Yeah, obsessed. You can So I don't detail. stick to the same style ever. No. So... For example, a normal brand would bring a new style out a year every 18 months, change the colorways on it per season. I bring four out a season. Wow. Completely new styles and different colorways. I'll design up to 200 pairs of shoes a season. And do you design myself. them yourself? Do you do them? Yeah, myself, wow. yeah. Myself. So what, you, did, what got you into designing shoes? Or did you wake up one day and go, I don't like those shoes. I think I can do a No, I've done, a, I've done a shoot for someone when I was doing bits and pieces of modeling when I first got on the show for brands and I had a pair of shoes on. They were so expensive and I didn't have a pot to piss in at the time. Yeah. So I was like, oh, we need something cheaper than this, same quality. And I just met someone from Turkey, a friend of mine that was living out there doing some stuff with fabrics. I said, can you make shoes over there? I want them for myself. It was just a one-off pair. And they come back, the sample was amazing. So it was like, should we have a shot at this? And we started off with uh, 50 pairs. And then it was the biggest, the biggest decision of our lives ever to make because it was 50 pairs sitting in a warehouse that we was using from someone with a leak in the ceiling and every sale oh, got I through. I love this more We'd than run you to the end. So then we didn't sell our first collection. We sold about 10 pairs of it. It was a failure. And then we thought, we can't give up, we'll do it again. And then Will I Am wore them on The Voice. Is that William with a couple of dots in it? Yeah, name? yeah, that's it. William, yeah, that's him. <laughs> and then I can never get his name on Instagram either. Yeah. Then he wore them and then it went quiet again. Then we took on another but designer. How did you, say, you said Will I Am wore them, I brushed past that. But how did he wear I mean, you had very few pairs. You, 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 we had Because like, your second shipment, how, how many? Well, it was about 50 pairs again. 50 At the pairs. time, we was in debt of 25 grand because Jesus. we had a, we started with a 20 grand um, investment yeah. from my friend's dad. We paid back straight away and all of our money went into stock we lost it a website broke in the first 10 minutes we had to get someone i know to do 24 hour support all of our imagery was done on our phones it was the worst if you this is the way not to launch a brand and then over it took us a year getting up off the ground and we were still only doing a few pairs here and there and we went from doing, try not to say the thing without doing the actual numbers. We, we, we went from doing, <laughs> yeah, he, got, he we, wants to keep it close we to We went chest. from doing like, I'd say a thousand pairs a year 
So now we do 80,000 pairs a season. So that's 160,000 pairs a year. And that's without our clothing. So we're, yes. we're one of the big, we're most of the competitors. So, will I, so when Will I Am wore those really on the early days and then you said it went quite upset, but how come because a pair he's, ended up in his on stylist, his His stylist followed me on Instagram. Right. And I ended up getting really well there. And she was like, can you give some stuff away for Will? And I was like, I don't know if we can afford to give a pair away. We've got no money. <laughs> we had a leak in the roof. Oh, honestly. Come on, already. So then we give them to him and then we had Craig David, then we had Drake and then we had people like that. On the back of Will I Am? Just in general. Just in general. Okay. Up. But then I put a stop to all that stuff. Okay. Because I was that sort of person looked at I was like, no, this is a brand of the people. And I want okay. to see the people wearing the brand. Yeah. I want your builder on a Friday night leaving yeah, yeah. work, going to the pub, buys yeah. the shoes, feel great in them. Yeah. And they was cheaper than Gucci. Yeah, of course. So I stopped all the celebrity stuff. Yeah, I weren't okay. interested. I yeah, don't care yeah. about being in magazines. Yeah, all yeah. I want to do is see them on people's feet. And these are magic moments. So have you had a few of those moments where you've just randomly been out, whatever, and have you seen people? Every day of my life. Oh my God. Mate, so one of my shoes, I can't say the story. It's probably the biggest store in the world. Okay. One of my styles was the best selling performing shoe in the whole store. Oh my so God. So if any store I'm in now, I'm number one brand in the whole store. And I go against Armani, Hugo Boss. I go against a lot of big brands. And this I can't is in say. five years. Five years, yeah. This is the thing. This is a great lesson for anybody who's looking to get in business or whatever the case is. So in what seems like a really crowded market, like you would think that most people would be put off going, well, trainers have been done. Everybody does trainers. Yeah. Uh, not only trainers, but footwear. I mean, yours are in between us, like, yeah. you know, fashionable footwear. But for you to go, no, I can still improve it. I can still make that better. I don't care. We're still going to do it we're gonna get f i love this 50 pairs 50 pairs i just love it 50 pairs and there's a photo of me sitting next to the 50 pairs and i'm the proudest person in the world well that's going to be in the autobiography the yeah. champion minds and then champion minds <laughs> we're looking to develop we're using like pineapple levers so levers made out of pineapple we're looking at getting plastic out of the ocean and putting into garments and stuff like that now, now it's getting tricky but all of that stuff for me is one i'm helping yeah. and two I'm opening up another market because a lot of people don't really care about all that sort of stuff. But then you have the other market of vegans. Yes. They care about it. Yeah. Well, a lot of people listening to this podcast are either vegetarian and vegan, and some aren't. On this podcast, you get some people that, because there are very healthy meat eaters and non-healthy meat eaters, very healthy vegetarians and non-healthy vegetarians. We often have this discussion on, on most of the podcast. But there are some people that are strict vegans and yeah. they're very much... Ethically, they want to wear the right stuff and everything else. Obviously, this is you're paying yeah. attention to that. Sustainability is huge at the moment. In order to achieve what you've achieved, you do need a sharp mind. You need a sharp body. You need a sharp this. You've stopped drinking because you, that was getting in the way of you. Yeah. Like nothing's getting in the way. You also you come on board. You you make sure that your health, your fitness plays a massive part because presumably, if you're not physically healthy and fit, then mentally you can't be healthy. You can't. Fit. Juicing as well for me. So I wake up in the morning, I have a ginger shot and I have juice. If I don't have it, I, listen, it's going to sound like Jason's paid me to do this. He has not paid me to say this. I really this. haven't. Not if at I all. I, I can't I afford it. I wish you did. <laughs> I can't afford it. If I don't wake up in the morning and I don't have a juice, I don't start my day properly. And it's nothing to do with health. It's my head. I feel like I've had the health in me and I've done something good and it starts my day off. I don't want to go and eat anything bad because I've had that in the morning. Do you so work I, out in the morning as well? Every morning, 6am. Yeah. Right. So you've got the morning right. And it's funny, the more uh, entrepreneurs that I speak to, it's this morning thing. Right? First this thing. morning thing, you get the morning. Because you and I know anything can go wrong in the day. Yeah. Right. Exactly. We all know anything can go a bit pear-shaped. We have no, you know, that's how it is. Our yep. mood could change. But in the morning, and anybody listening now, you have more time control over the morning than any other time of your day. Like you said, even on holiday, you get up three hours before yeah, yeah. to make sure every you day. do your stuff. And I train every morning on holiday as well. So you train every morning. And then do you train before your juice? Yeah, I fast all the time. I bet there's a reason you've got to get up in the morning because you feel like while everyone's in bed, you've done something. Can it put you in a better mood? Because you feel like you've achieved something and everyone else ain't. So I like putting that post up in the morning saying completed it and everyone else is getting out of bed. And I do it on Sundays. I'm up same time every day. And but I go to bed about but it's one. it's inspirational for so many people though. So that's the thing. We're, we're in a, a relatively woke society at the moment. We are, this is how mm. it is. And it's like, sounds corny, but people have had more than they've ever had in history. Yeah. And yet it appears that there's a, there's a lack, what they don't have. They focus on what they don't have, but they're not willing to do anything to go out and get it. Not they, yeah, I mean, no. not, not collective. Everybody, I mean, look at you. There's low, you know, I mean, I was going to say loads of time. There aren't many Tommy <laughs> Mannings out there, to be honest with you. I wish there was. I'd but like you job. said, if, if, like here at Juice I'm looking at the river now we're inside this room but I can look at the river now and the earlier you get up the more mist you see the less people you see the there's a magic about the morning. I love and it. And like you said, you're up. And this would be my advice as well to everybody else. So Tom, if you're looking to be successful in any area of your life, and who wouldn't be, then up. Do your physical exercise. Do your meditation if that's what do some mindset stuff. 
Get your nutrition after that, but make sure you exercise. I always exercise on a fast. I mean, you've got always. enough in the tank. Always. And you burn more fat. You do all If I eat, I can't train. No, I can't. I can't Absolutely train. Absolutely not. Weirdly, even if I have a banana, which actually leaves the stomach in 40 minutes, I still can't yeah, train. Yeah, I can't. If I have a juice, I can't train. I mean, it's fine. I'll have to wait a little while after yeah. the juice. I'm I'm a stickler for that though. And sometimes I hate it when I know I've eaten something. I could be on a holiday. I've eaten something. Oh, I can't. Can't and, even go and gym. And then can't it goes, it goes. Off. Yeah, we're too similar. On that note, <laughs> it's actually quite spooky. It's, it's, it's like a brother from another mother. It's just like, this is getting more frightening by the second during this podcast. It, it really is. We've got to wrap it up. You've already given a little message out there. What's your closing tax to the 18 to 30 year old that's obsessed with social media, whatever the case is, beating themselves up? Maybe they don't have their education. What would you just say to them right now to encourage them or to lift their mental spirits or or even if they think they haven't achieved what they wanted to achieve by the age of 30 or all these rules that people have? Everyone's running their own race. Everyone's everyone's doing different stuff. Like some people achieve early and someone could achieve later and become a billionaire and the same man achieved early and spent all his money and don't take no for an answer never never ever take no for an answer never that's the worst thing you can do is someone tell me no about saying if you tell me no I'll go and start my own one off then we'll become a competitor See, this is why you had to be self-employed because there's no way on earth you can can't take, take authority no, you can't, can't take no you've got to run your own race you've got to remember that so anything you're doing it takes time I see something very interesting the other day just to wrap yeah. this up if you plant a seed, you don't dig it up every 24 hours and see how hard it's grown. You wait for it to come up there. Yeah. It's the same with anything. Plant a seed and you just got to graft and get it done. I think that's a great, I mean, that's a great way to fit. What's your uh, social media for everybody? Tommy Mallet. Oh, another thing, another thing, stay off of Twitter. Yeah. Good. Stay Thank you for saying that. Stay yeah. off of Twitter. Because it's the most negative place in the world. And the thing is with Instagram, as much as it can be a bit fake, everything's fake. But the positivity, you see nice things, you see nice places. Twitter's dark, man. Whenever anybody's posts anything to me negative on Instagram, right? Whenever they do, mm. I, I only react by saying, oh, you're in the wrong place. Get yourself over to Twitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't say anything I'll else. I just block them. I just say, I just block them. Block them. He, does, he doesn't even mess about. <laughs> Listen, this is Tommy my first ever podcast and it has been... The single most inspirational words we have ever done. It went in a direction that I never imagined. I have a genuinely newfound respect Thank on you. a level that is quite extraordinary, really. I think everybody, I'm going to put this podcast out to every young person, <laughs> old person, whatever, just to have this certain mindset. Look out for it because you might not need this podcast if already the Tommy Mallet champion mindset. Look out for the book. Also, no, I'm telling you, this is happening. I'm telling you that now because there's only one person that can teach the champion mindset, none other than the person with more of it than anybody I have, I think I've ever met. It is the one, the only. It's Tommy Mallet, everybody. Thank you. 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 Thank you.